Good afternoon and welcome to Robbing Minds. My name is Isabella Akinche and we will be kicking off the show discussing the creative economy. And joining me, I have Yemi Akinyemi Dele, popularly known as Yemi AD. Yemi, welcome to Robbing Minds. Thank you for having me. Hi. And I mean, going through your bio, you started off as a dancer, a choreographer, you've moved behind the scenes to work with top international artists, to do great productions across the world. But now you're home, you're in Nigeria. What motivated you to come home? Well, uh, simply the fact that I have never been here before. And has the Nigeria that you've seen so far lived up to the expectation and to what you've been seeing in the media? You know what, there is a lot. Nigerians say about Nigeria, not even like uh, what world think how life is here and what the life is here is two different things. In what way? And what are the differences? Well, well, because first of all, in Europe, you don't really see any news from Africa. You never see like nothing. If you don't want to see it, if you don't Google it, go like search for it, you don't see it. They don't show us anything. So because my father is from Nigeria, I was always like, trying to learn as much, uh, learn how to cook the food and so on. So, so I knew, but being here on the ground is a total different feeling. Like, I think the most, the biggest difference is the energy of people. There is like so much energy, like the way like people welcome me here. And I was yesterday uh, at a dance competition, just like with, uh, with the kids and I saw them dance, I saw them sing, I saw them play instruments and it was amazing. And did you feel at home, like you're Nigerian, your father is Nigerian, I your must, mom is Czech? I must say that I was afraid because in Czech people tell I'm, say I'm black and here they say I'm white. So, <laughs> so, so. so has anyone called you Oyibo? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. I, don't, I wouldn't even know what it means. Oh, that means someone that's fair-skinned. So in case okay. you hear that, that's what Oyibo? Okay, Oyibo. I'm going to like, okay, <laughs> we'll do that. So, so uh, the, the purpose of my, um, of my travel here was... Um, a workshop in the University of Lagos, which, which was held on uh, Friday. And uh, besides my lecture on the future of creativity, I also brought scholarships for students who would like to do either dancing or coding, because uh, many people think uh, there's not so much creativity in coding, software development, but there actually is. Uh, yeah, and that was the first time I felt like home. Like the class was full, it was like 100 something people, and uh, I gave the lecture, and then I started to like talk to the people and I I realized that I missed I missed a lot. Oh, so coming back home will be something that will be on the agenda. Definitely. I'm coming back again in December. This is just like a, the beginning of the mission that I initiated and from with the materials and with the things that I learned, I will try to bring more to be able to enable other young talents to to pursue their dreams. I mean, you with um, top acts like Kanye West, for example, what has that experience been like working with you know, top producers, top artists across the world? It's, it's funny because you have a dream and you never think about what you do when you fulfill it, right? Your aim is like just to get there, but I got there and then, you know, like I did the VMAs, I did the Saturday Night Live, I directed the Jesus Tour, I did the Coachella and so on. So many things. I traveled like around the planet several times and dance and choreography, our direction brought me this opportunity. So then I was saying, I was thinking, so what do I do now? I still, you know, Like what next? Yeah. Like you've reached the epitome of what some people dream of all their lives. And I feel like uh, this is maybe just an opportunity for me to understand how can I turn this into something also for others? Because we all, you know, we, some people have a hard time to take care of themselves. To take care of others is like a next level. So I believe that for me what's fulfilling is to share, to teach, and to try to get that experience and try to explain other people, young talents. I'm really like a fan of talent. Like when I see somebody who's talented, I really like want to go for it. So... I hope I can do that here. And speaking of talents, which you have many of, you have, you've been a dancer, a producer, which of these talents did you enjoy exploring the most? Well, dance was always like my universal language because when I, I was born in the 80s in Czech Republic and I was the only black person in the city. Wow. Uh, for many years, and maybe until 12 or 13, then another black guy moved in. <laughs> just you, just in me. the entire it was, city. The city was 100,000 people. It was just me. So, 
And it was hard because, you know, it was communism. So, and, um, so me and my mom, we were like struggling. So dance for me was a time when other kids would want to play with me because they would want to learn the steps or the moves. And it would be like the unifying moment. So it stayed close to my heart. And then, of course, the music is inspiring. So I would always come, no matter where I am, on what level of business I am, I will always come back to dance because dance has opened doors for me and have allowed me to meet the greatest people on this earth. So, so dance it is. But in, in, uh, in like, uh, my most current career, last year we, we were working on campaigns for Mercedes-Benz and for Adidas Originals. And we, our team, which is young people, it's people between 18 and uh, 30 years old, um, we won eight international awards from, from different categories. And like, that is also a fulfillment, to see that the team that you create is successful, whether you're there or not, that it's, it's, it's actually happening. So sharing that glory and passing on that belief someone had in you to give you the opportunity and giving other people, empowering them. But let's look at Nigeria as a whole. When it comes to the creative economy, do you believe Nigeria has what it takes to replace say, oil that has been a major driver of the economy with the creative economy, entertainment, arts, culture? You know what? People always think that creativity always just comes or, or links with entertainment. But if you remember, I like to take an example of Leonardo da Vinci, which uh, was one of the greatest creators of all times, but was multidisciplinary, because he would, would enable technology to create planes. He would enable doctors to do surgeries, because he would paint the first uh, things of, in our organs and so on. So it was, he showed us how to intertwine art, technology, science, medicine, you know? So in every important movement of humankind forward, there was a creator. But in the 70s, 80s, 90s, in the companies, they teach us that we're not creative. Because creativity takes time, it's difficult. You, if you experiment, it doesn't always work. And they needed us to perform, to be effective, just come at the job, do your thing, don't stroll, don't look around, just be like robots. But now AI and all the automation in technology is going to take jobs, it's going to take a lot. But there's only two things that they cannot substitute. It's empathy and it's creativity. So I think creativity is going to be a new currency in the future. And I think Nigerian people have always been creative. Because as me in, in Czech Republic, we also struggled. We were occupied by Germans, by Russians, and we needed to be creative to kind of like preserve our way of life. Yeah, preserve I, your culture and your way of doing things. And I want to take you back to again, Nigeria. I'm looking at your outfit and I'm thinking Ankara. I'm thinking, how have you seen the culture of Nigeria, the food, um, the colors? I mean, Nigerians can be very flashy when they go for events. What has been your experience so far? Uh, so when we went to University of Lagos, we, uh, when I finished, uh, the students, they took me on a tour. And it was like one of the happiest moments of, that, of, of this day because we were just walking on the seaside and I saw like people were having photo shoots. They were like, like um, young people playing instruments, like just outside in the compound. I'm definitely coming back there. I want to shoot some, some videos to, to document because you see so much color and you see so much also social capital among the young people. I haven't seen everything, yeah? I'm just learning. So I'm just telling you what I see from the first point, uh, how people like, support each other and the togetherness. We have nothing like that in Europe. You know, it's much more individualistic and much more like distant. So community, you've seen yeah. that. What about the food? Like, have you had jollof rice? Have you had any of the soups, egusi, like okra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love the melon soup. Okay, that's my soup. That's my favorite one. With I'm sorry, pounded I, yam, eba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with pando. And I also learned how to make fufu from, um, from my father uh, in Czech Republic. Because, because I love African food, but you can't buy it. You can't, there's no restaurants that offer it. So the only place to eat it would be if we make it. So I had had it, but to eat Nigerian food in Europe is different than to eat Nigerian food in Nigeria. So I'm having a blast. So what are some things you've seen in Nigeria that are definitely not true as being portrayed in the media? Like things that you only have to come here and you can only see this yourself before you believe it. This is, this is very funny that you ask that because, uh, you know, on my Instagram page, it's the Yemi Alchemist, I started this new feed. I said, welcome to Nigeria. And the first few pictures that I put was like, 
you know, like people pushing things, people carrying stuff, drivers, people riding on motor motorcycles. But it's just like the first peak. And people were like, some, I, there's lots of fans, but some people are like, oh, I wish you wouldn't show these pictures because this is the prejudice, this is what everybody thinks that Nigeria is. And I just said, wait for it. Because this is maybe where the story begins. But this is, is this where the story ends? I don't think it's up to others. I think it's up to us how it ends. Maybe people can see in the beginning, okay, all this like people struggle or people trying to do better or unemployment or this or that. But you need to stay a little bit longer. You need to be able to see under the surface because there is so much joy. There is so much, like people who in Europe, they will complain all day long. Here they are powerful, they are strong and they are pursuing. That's why I love to work with the students because like their passion and their energy can overrule anything. So I'm, tr I'm going to try to reveal that through my Instagram feed and through uh, other ways, uh, through documentary. I have a, um, a videographer here and so on. And I want people to be patient because, you know, I don't want to be, I want to be honest about what I see. But I don't want to stay in the surface. So it's kind of like an onion. You keep bringing one layer exactly, out, another exactly, layer out, exactly. another layer out. And I'm sure people who have stayed with the feed would have seen the University of Lagos, the different things that you're seeing. So what plans do you have going forward? So I'm going to go for nine more days here. I'm going to visit Abuja. Uh, I'm invited by the embassy. I'm going to go uh, to Ibadan, which where my family is from. And uh, yeah, and when I get that all together, I'm going to go uh, back to Prague, where, where, where for now I live. I have a few more projects around, around Europe, in London, and in New York. And I will be back in December. And my goal is to gather all the materials and the videos from this trip and uh, send it around to find more sponsors. Because for now, we have a few dozens of uh, options for scholarships, but I don't think it's enough. And I, I want to offer these scholarships because, honestly, if this, this uh, thing wouldn't exist, I wouldn't be born. My father came to Czech Republic to study uh, economics, and then he influenced us somehow. Now I'm influencing. So I think to create the whole circle, I think it's on me now to bring this opportunity for someone new. So speaking to you, I can see education is one way that we can influence the creative economy. In which other ways can we really exploit that potential that we have as Nigerians? I think that... Uh, Honestly, like, you know, like there are big players uh, in the world. You know, you have China, you have India, you have United States. And I think it's important to own something that the other people do not own. You know, if everybody's doing the same, it's, it's you know, it, the competition is just equals. So in Czech Republic, because we are a small country, 10 million people, we go a different way than in the United States. I think in Nigeria, uh, the, the creativity for me is, is, is number one. You know, the oil and all this, I think it's a little bit um, like, how to say, it's going to be obsolete very soon. You know, it's not going to take long before the world is changing already now. We, we're seeing it. The exponential growth is going to change everything. The technologies are going to change everything. So I think the investment into creative industries, the investment into people, into education is the key. And I also think uh, investment into uh, mental health no matter how strange it might feel, I think that sometimes it is people hurting people. You know, it's not the institutions, it's not the, it's not the system that you can blame, it's just simple, one one, you know, so, and sometimes because people go through a lot, they go through a lot of pain, and then the, that pain creates them to, to, to behave different otherwise, you know, so. I think those are the things. So having traveled the world, what do you think that other people are doing, other governments are doing to make there like a thriving environment for creatives to really succeed? I think uh, the importance is not to stigmatize mistakes. Because, um, so in America, if you want to, if you have a startup and you need funding, you go to ask uh, for the funding and they ask you if you have bankrupted. So naturally you would say, no, never, you know, I'm perfect. But that answer would be wrong. Why? Because if they knew you have been corrupted, but you still stood up and you're coming forward, it means 
you are, have a, you are strong. You, you are able to deal with the stress and with everything. So in Czech Republic, and I think in Nigeria too, you tell me, I think uh, people are afraid to do mistakes. People are afraid. And this time of exponential growth, the main thing is fail fast, learn fast. Every time you fail, every time you step ahead, every time you can grow. So safe environment, not to punish people. That, like, of course there's stupid mistakes because somebody is lazy or somebody doesn't want to wake up. This is, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about safe environment in the uh, in aspect of being able to try to, to experiment a little bit. Because innovation is not enough. Creation is something that is going to create that exponential curve. And i like to touch on funding because that's something you mentioned with the tech startups. A lot of times... Being creative is an expensive venture, and sometimes you don't see it. It's not as tangible as maybe you go to a school and you decide to build schools, for example. When you're investing in creativity, it might take time for that to show. So what, what um, case do we have as Nigerians to say, no, we have to invest just as much as we're investing in health, for example, in education, in, in creative economy? You know what? Uh, it's very funny because I don't think that to... Uh, to boost creativity is expensive. I think it's just about the mindset and it's just about the right leaders, the right type of people who knows what to do. Because, you know, if you want to be whatever, I think every other thing will be more expensive than creativity. Sometimes, uh, you know, like let's say uh, that some client comes to us, like let's say Coca-Cola, they want to they wants to us to bring solution. So, and sometimes we have limits on budget. So it would be the creative people to find a way how to fulfill the budget. Like my, my company gets awards not for spending a lot of money, but for efficiency, for effectivity. And that effectivity comes from creativity. So, so I think that change doesn't have to be cost, costly. I think that change just needs to be smart. It needs to be smart. So what would you change about the creative economy if you could in Nigeria? I think that right now in, uh, in Lagos there is a, like an arts festival running. I am trying to uh, I will attend today and I need to see more because it would be, I think it would be very arrogant to come and talk to Nigerians about what to change before I really make my research. So I want to take my time and really go and see everything and then come back and offer solutions. I think, I think that sometimes we tend to leave it to the institutions or leave it to somebody we don't want to be responsible, but the truth is every one of us, everybody can offer those solutions. So like in your capacity, giving scholarships is one way Definitely. going because, to teach. Because connecting, you know, you have this issue of millennials, yeah? Everybody, like who, people who are born between 1980 and 2000, you know, and people say they are lazy. You know, they are, they don't they keep attention. They are multitasking. They don't unplug. They, you know, so many, they are stressed and, you know, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to hear about their mistakes. But the environment and the technological boost is doing something to those kids. And we don't want to understand them. And then they don't want to understand the older people. So there is a big, there is, there is a big clash between, between the generations. And I think that Working with the people in the university, working with the, the youth, listening to what they need, allowing them to travel and to learn more than bringing it back to the country, I think this is the best way to go. It might not be a solution that's going to solve everything tomorrow, but it will lay foundation, very important foundation for generations to come. Thank you very much, Yemi AD, Yemi Aki, Yemi Dele, for that lovely conversation. Thank you for having me.